great about that, other than trying to help people who are in a state of invasion. Welcome back to the Immigration Answer Show. My name is Jim Hacking. I'm an immigration attorney practicing law throughout the United States out of our offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. I'm fired up today. TikTok's been shutting me down. I've been trying to get a TikTok to post all day, and it just won't go. They're making me mad. I shot it twice. I even took out the cussing the second time. They still won't post it. I thought it was because I said the word bullshit, but that must not be it. I think they don't like the content I made a post about the Supreme Court, what scumbags they are, and what ridiculous clowns they are, about how they won't put a halt to the Texas statute allowing Texas law enforcement to nab suspected migrants who lack status and try to deport them back to Mexico, even if they're not from Mexico. What the heck are corporate overlords in China don't like my message? So I've posted it twice. I posted it to YouTube, the second one, the one without the cussing. So if you want to see it, it's on YouTube. But TikTok just times me out. It says zero views, zero comments. It's making me mad. So I made a nice little TikTok about dumb mistakes people make at their green card interview. So don't do that. Now, listen, one of our favorite people is in the waiting room. So we're going to have to get to her right away. We don't want to keep her waiting. She's a very busy nurse. You know that. Nurse Laura is here. Hello, Laura. Hey, Jim. How's it going? Good. I thought maybe you might be coming on sometime. You, you said you were, and then yesterday the name of a certain company came up, so I thought you might be coming to pay me a visit. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay, thanks. Yeah, um, still with that ear infection, but that's okay. Oh, that's no fun. How's Seattle? Oh, you know, it's Seattle. <laughs> Do you like living there? Uh, I think out of... Most places in the United States, I would prefer to live in Seattle. Mm, that's cool. Yeah. Well, what's up? Yeah. What's up? So um, I came on to ask you a question, and I don't think you're going to like this. <laughs> oh, let's do it. Let's hear it. I, that's fine. That's so, fine. Yeah. So I did something that you told people not to do. Okay. Um, I filed an I-90 to change my last name after our wedding in August. Oh, that's okay. It was actually approved, um, so no problem there. My card was supposed to be, well, it was uh, produced. So the timeline was basically, it was six months to approval. And then the card was produced in about two weeks, sent out and then sent back to USCIS as undeliverable. I am still waiting for this damn card. <laughs> Have you changed your address? No. Has the address, like, is it, when you got your original green card, is it still the same address? Exactly the same. So nothing's changed. Mm -mm. Did you talk to your post office? Yeah, and they uh, they blamed USCIS. USCIS is blaming USPS. So it's like that Spider Man meme where they're pointing at each other. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That sucks. Well, um, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, what you know, Adela has a little trick she does to get on the phone and um, get them to keep from destroying it. That's the main thing right now is you don't want them to destroy it. Yeah, I have an inquiry in to um, get them to send it back. Yeah. Um, and they said that they're working on it and that I shouldn't keep asking because it'll work slower if I keep asking. That's not you know, true. That's not true. I, but I, I know it's not. I'm like, oh, it's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um, if you yeah. say bullshit on TikTok, they won't post your video. I don't post on TikTok anyway. <laughs> oh, smart. Maybe um, I should either. Well, TikTok's a pretty good app, so I can't blame you for that. Yeah. Uh, I just don't have anything to say. But um, I did want to ask you, hypothetically, if a person mm. is non-religious but is a pacifist, what are their chances of getting U.S. citizenship? You mean because they have to swear or affirm that they're going to say the truth? They're worried, you're worried about that part? Or they swear that mm. they're going to help out if there's a, a military to reason? To take up arms for the United States. Yeah, that's a good question. And, you know, um, I would say that most likely, I, I looked at this a while ago, um, 
Well, let's let's pull up the questions real quick. Do you do you have them there with you? I can look them up real quick. I, I don't I don't have anything up right now, but yeah. I'm just I'm just I, curious. I had it up yesterday. I might still have it up. Let me see. Uh, no, no worries. I know that the ACLU has fought uh, USCIS on this a few times. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is that you know, there's uh, I've talked before about all the old um, you know prohibitions about communism and things, but also yeah. pacifism back in the day was a real big problem for people that wanted to become citizens. So, yeah. So, so let's let's just look at the questions exactly. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Do you support the Constitution form of government in the United States? Do you understand the oath? Are you willing to take the oath? If the law requires it, are you willing to bear arms on behalf of the United States? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so that I think that is a problem. I think it's a statutory thing. I mean, I, I could check on it. That would be a fun thing for our, uh, maybe the, well, you, you, the, this hypothetical person won't be applying anytime soon, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. So um, maybe email me um, in May when the interns come. I'll have them research it. That sounds good. Yeah. One of the, one of the, intern, one of the interns is going to be my son. So it'll be fun. Oh, that's great. Which yeah. one? Uh, Ibrahim, the third one. He, he, uh, he did an internship. He's a freshman at university of Minnesota. He did an internship at an immigration clinic and he loved it. So now he's thinking about oh. coming to hang out here. Yeah. Yeah. That's really great. Um, by the way, if, if it's okay, can I just tell you the, uh, form filling website information? I love it. Basically it's like a thousand dollars for the one that I tried to use. Um, you fill out a questionnaire from their website and then they fill out the forms for you. Um, some of the forms, I mean, one of them had a question about, um, I think the 485 had a question about, um, have you ever worked in a prison internment camp, all that kind of stuff. And I was a prison and, uh, or as a prison nurse. So I had to say yes to that question and then they said no on it. So then they claimed that, oh, well, you know, you filled out the forms yourself and that's why there's so many errors on this. I'm like, I didn't see these forms until they showed up on my doorstep. So I don't know. <laughs> anyway. So you um, caught the mistakes. You caught the mistakes before you sent it in. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I read that thing super closely. If I'm tooth comb. The other thing is, I don't know if this is in every state, but in states where it needs to be an attorney who fills out paperwork for you, um, they will refuse to fill out the preparer section which as far as i'm aware is perjury if you say that you did it and you didn't actually do it yeah yeah i mean that that's probably the best tell of all uh, just mm -hmm. generally with notarios or form fillers is if and, and to me if someone won't sign their name to their work that's just that's just you know nothing good's going to happen from that 100 percent. as a nurse i completely agree <laughs> um so did you have the sense laura that um you were putting in the information and it was just automatically mapped to forms or did you have the sense that somebody nope. was actually typing it in? No, there was someone who was typing it in. How do you know? So from the, um, from the contact that I had with the people who were filling out the forms, yeah. um, it was, I don't know how specific I can be without. No, it's okay. But just, you had the sense that there was a human being in between you and the forms. That's all I need. Very to know. much. So, yeah, they said when I told them, when I emailed them to tell them, Hey, I was a nurse in a prison infirmary. I didn't, wasn't a CEO or anything like that. Like I just had to say yes to working in the prison. They said that they would tell the person who was their form specialist. Ah, so there you go. Okay. Yeah. There right. was also an attorney who felt who went over the forms and they also did business law mostly. So I don't know what the heck was going on there, but they did a really bad job. So as a client, you can actually see the name of the attorney that they're using to, to, yes. Okay. I shouldn't say client cause you're not a client, but a, a customer right. of right. these companies. Okay. All right. Perfect. That's great. That's all good to know. And of course, with our example yesterday, you know, that was a perfect mm -hmm. example because yes, mom is entitled to get her green card. Yes, that's true. But has anyone thought about the overall picture of what happens to the son when mom gets her green card? And then, of course, son is also eligible to get a green card through mom. But does does that is that the right thing for him right now? These are the kinds of things that you lose when you don't work with attorneys that know what they're talking about. Totally. It made me really upset to hear that he had used boundless. Well, I don't know which company he used. I don't remember. Um, he did mention it and I remember it. But <laughs> anyway. All right. Cool. Have a great day, Laura. I hope you feel better. Thanks, Jim. Take care. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. We're having fun. We get, it's not often we get all of our favorite, our favorites on one of the shows. That's always good. Um, 
I'm still trying to figure out. Princess Lizzie was talking about some food she ate the other day or was hungry for. It was something I hadn't heard of. I meant to mention it, but um, oh, here's another favorite of ours. Temmie's here. What's up, Temmie? Looks like you're at work. Yes, sir. How you doing, sir? I'm great. How you doing? Yeah. I'm very, very sorry. I'm having some three questions that is kind of a little explanation. The first one, I think I'm not getting these things very, very well. When um, a foreigner marry citizen and he have a kid, he it when he file, he or she, when they file, if the kid, uh, the baby of, let's say the kid is the under the 18 years, you know, like some processing of the green card took like four years, five years, whatever, before you get it. And when the baby, when the kid is, like 18 years when he's filing is he cover the baby or it's not cover the child okay so we have a u.s citizen who marries a foreign national right mm -hmm. and the u.s citizen is applying for and the foreign national has a kid is that what you're saying yeah like the beneficiary has a kid and how old is the kid and the kid is 17 years when they file so if they're under and and the u.s citizen is filing for the kid yeah, no, like uh, in the paper, you see, when they fight together, you know, like some father or mother like them to become citizens before they fight for their kids. Is yeah. it something that makes sense or you no, just no. file it together? So, no, that's a bad call. So if, if a U.S. citizen marries a foreign national and that foreign national has a kid who's 17, the U.S. citizen should file an I-130 for the mom and an I-130 for the child. Two separate ones right away. Don't wait for mom to get her green card. Okay, so that's my first question. The second question is that I have a friend that they are live they are married, but him and his wife, two of them have like a place, and the list of the guy is not yet finished, so they kind of short. They spend three days here, three days here, but the guy have a pending asylum, but it's not changed the address to the wife. Is it something that they can? have a pro problem for him in future well is he going to apply for some benefit through the wife or is he just going to stick on asylum no he, he's going to uh, do something on his wife and so he's waiting till they live together to actually file the i-130 yes which i think is a good idea i think that's a good idea yes uh, no for the asylum case no if he hasn't filed the marriage case yet then it probably doesn't matter and on the asylum case i mean as long as he can check his mail and if he's splitting time that's okay mm -hmm. So that is the that is my question. Thank you so much. How is the fasting is going? Good. It's going great. Ten yeah. days, day ten. So I look up at the moon every night and see that it's getting bigger and bigger. So I'm I'm happy. But there's one th there's something in uh, concerning the fasting. You know, in Africa, they said that until the sun went before you can break in the afternoon. Yeah. But in Maryland here, I saw that some of the um sometimes six o'clock six thirty the moon is still there. Uh, the sun is not yet finished. How are you guys doing it? It's like 7.15, so it's not too bad. Oh, 7.15. Yeah. Okay. See you, buddy. Thank you so much. All right, later. All right, all right. Let's go to have a question. What's up, have a question? For a friend. How you doing? Hello. Hello from Paris. Oh, uh, oh we had a great time in Paris this summer. Oh, man, did we have fun. Nice. I love Paris. What can I help you with? Yeah, well, um, just to just to say, I'm a U.S. citizen living abroad. I've never lived in the United States. I'm married to a French citizen wife, a beautiful wife, and um, we've got three kids. They're 15, 11, and 6. Um, and uh, my parents, my, my father has lived in the U.S. for many, many years during his childhood. And basically, our goal is to get to see if we can get the U.S. citizenship for our three children. So uh, I've looked at the N600K form, yeah. which, um, which could, which could uh, allow this through my dad, therefore the, the, the grandparents of my children, because I, I can't justify of five years in the U.S. Right. My dad can. So... My first question is, um, who should um, fill in the form? Should it be me who actually apply it or do the application to the USCIS, or would it, does it have to be my father? 
I've never handled a case like this. Really? Okay. Um, I think they're pretty hard to pull off. Um, not to say it's impossible, but um, I don't know the answer to that because I've never done it before. Okay. I mean, the uh, form should say, the form should say the N six hundred K should say um, who fills it out. Well, actually, you put the name of the children. You put I put my name as a father, and I have to put my dad's name. But basically. The application um, and you know creating a USCIS account and then you know uploading this these files, I don't know if it should be my dad who can justify or myself. Uh, well, I mean, I'm looking at the form, so it says in the first couple of pages are all about the child, right? And then about the child's uh, biological parent, correct? And then about the um, the qualifying citizen grandparent. That's right. And then it's signed by, let's see who signs it. Oh. Yeah. It's funny, they don't sit, let's see. Okay. That, that's the point. Yeah, so the child is the applicant. Yep. Oh, child is the applicant. Yep. So do I have to, so for my three kids, do I have to, well, three, obviously three forms, but do I upload it? Do I create three accounts, even if they're. Well, I know you're, I know you're overseas. So electronic might be easier. If you were here in the United States, I would tell you to do it on paper because then right. it would just be easy to just print out three. I mean, I think, yeah, I think each person would need their own account. Mm -hmm. I don't, okay. we don't do much electronic filing. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe one other question, maybe, I don't know if you could be of any advice. Uh, and, and one of those questions in the form, it says, what is the immigration status of my spouse? I don't know what immigration status means. Let's She's see. French citizen. Um, do you have an idea about that? Hold on, I just saw it. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't have any information about the child's admission into the United States. Okay. And current. Yeah, so the so your wife has no status in the United States. No, she's never she doesn't have a green card or anything. Never been no. there. Yeah, so you would click as a tourist. Yeah, you would just say other and none. Okay, okay. Um, and then one last thing, I've um, uh, you know, once you I submit this form, these forms for the three kids, uh, then there's there's normally an appointment with a uscis officer and um yeah i don't know i don't know if you can file this from abroad i don't know oh well the filing uh, the filing i think because i created an account yesterday and it seems that i could uh but then it's um you know the, the appointment once they analyze and they they, yeah. they get an appointment and you have yeah, to go there's, actually, there's you know, like a little ceremony they do they bring in all the n600 kids together and they do this little flag waving thing and yeah, so yeah. usually there's, there's a part that they're in the United States. Okay, so that that means that let's say I could not do this um, uh, face to face, like let's say in the U.S. Embassy here in Paris, for instance. I don't know if that's an option. Yeah, I, I have not seen that, but uh, I was just I, wondering. I doubt it. I doubt it because it's all a USCIS thing, and the USCIS offices have all closed overseas. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you. Sir. Uh, yeah um yeah so so it's the allegiance that you are referring to with the flag and so on the oath allegiance yep okay would there be someone you could recommend me to talk with uh mm, i don't know is this very specific it's very unusual unusual okay and and, and I've, i have i think it'd be something hard to pull off from overseas why are you doing all this is it is the plan for everyone to come to america well um yeah, it's to, you know, part of the heritage of, of, of my family to give it and then giving the uh, the possibility to my children if, you know, they want to so move, yeah. into, the, yeah, move yeah. into the States. It'll obviously be easier with the U.S. Uh, citizenship rather than, you know, applying for a green card or. Yeah. So you might do some checking to see if you can even do this overseas. I just don't know. 
Okay, because I tried to get in contact with USCIS representatives yesterday, and it's not impossible. Know. This is a this is a very very rare thing to think that somebody could get their citizenship through their grandfather. Um, that's that's just something that, that they're not seeing very often of that. I bet they probably do this twenty times a year for the whole country. Mm. Okay, do you, are there any you know, maybe other another firm you know that who has I, no? I don't know. Okay. Okay. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. See ya. I don't know if I have much help, but good luck. <laughs> thank you. See ya. All right. All right. Um, good to see everybody. We're having fun. We're trying to answer some questions. Did I see Donna's here? Big up, Donna. What's up, Donna? Uh, yeah, that was fun having Laura on. Jay Cruz is here. What do you say, Jay Cruz? Hello. Good afternoon. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. How you doing? I'm very well, thank you. I always enjoy getting insight from you. Um, I think I'd, it's probably a really basic question, but I feel like I'm overthinking things. Okay. Um, real quick, my brother-in-law, he's here for a period of authorized stay with humanitarian parole with Nicaragua. Um, and that ends March of 2025. In the meantime, he has applied for asylum. So standing in the long line for that. My question is when it comes to renewing his work authorization, is he going to be applying for a new work authorization based on his pending asylum or is he going to be applying to like renew it but then just with a different eligibility category i would say both if he's eligible if he can apply for both do both but yeah for asylum he'll have he'll have the right after the time passes to apply for ead yep okay that was all my question thank you awesome. see ya. that was easy all right all right all right all right Aniket's here. Aniket, you're on mute. Yeah. Hey. Hi, Jim. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Great. Great. I'm doing great. Yeah, Jim. So I have one question for you. Like, that's a pretty like I need to explain you something before I get into the question. Is it okay. fine? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So Jim, my question is, I came to US uh, on a student visa for my masters, and after my graduation, I got married to a lawful permanent resident in june 2023 okay so basically we filed our i-130 i-485 765 and i-131 in oh. july 20. they were concurrent you filed them together yes okay and after a couple of months i got my i-765 approved great and in january the i-130 also got approved and it has been two months since i haven't heard back from them regarding the i-485 and it's still in the actively reviewing mode oh yeah so, well it's going to be in that for a long time you know about the visa bulletin right yes do, do, you, do you know about the visa bulletin or no yeah i do know about the visa bulletin but do i also need to check it uh on the visa bulletin in the f2a category in the f2a category yeah you sure do here let me show you so you're past the filing part now for you what's important are the final action dates so right now they're giving out green cards to people with a final action date, the spouses of green card holders, the F2A category from September of September 8th of 2020. So you've got a while to go. Okay, Jim. So I have one uh, follow-up question regarding this. So I have seen a couple of like, mo not couple of like, I have seen cases getting approved, uh, like who have applied after July also, and they are also married to a LPR. So is it like a random thing? Like the people get approved or how does it go? I don't know if that's, I mean, I believe you. I don't know if that's true, though. I don't know if people are giving you right information that, that that's not legally possible. So basically, I should wait for my final action dates on this F2A category. Is that correct? Not that you should. You have to. Okay, you. I have to. No, in, so, other words, in other words, it's going to just stay in that in that actively being reviewed until right now there's no visa available. So that means they can't give you a green card. Okay, Jim. So the the second question which I have is I will wrap it up quickly. So currently I'm working as a software volunteer volunteer at an NGO. Uh, during my F1 OPT, I have got my OPT EAD card, and I'm working as a volunteer to protect my F1 status. So the thing is, I have already got my adjustment of status based EAD with me. Yeah. Uh, so I am thinking to get some paid employment so that. I can uh, support pay the my bill. So you can pay your bills. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So yeah, the thing you're, is, you're is right. Okay? That, that is a, uh, 
that is a violation of your of your OPT F1. Yep, that's true. Yeah. So, is it okay to use the AOS EAD since you, uh, we are like I guess three, not three, like uh, two and a half years back on the F two A category in the final election days. So, well, is it okay to use the AOS EAD it's before the F one? Right now, it's probably more than um, two and a half years because it's not jumping month to month. So it's 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 been stuck for a while. So I don't think you can even say that. I think it's even going to be longer. I think it's actually, I think what's going to happen is you're going to be pending, pending, pending as a spouse of a green card holder until your spouse gets their citizenship and then upgrades your case to immediate relative. Okay, so so the last question is, is it okay to use my AOS EAD before my F1 OPT expires? Well, here's what I'm saying. Um, you're asking me, is it okay? I, I I can't answer, is it okay? All I can answer is it's a violation of your F1 to work with the EAD that you get through marriage. If you think your marriage case is going to sail right through, which it probably will, then it won't be a problem. But if it is, if it doesn't, then you're sort of left with nothing because your F1's expired, your F1's over because you worked without permission and then and then that's all you got. Yeah, so the thing is, Jim, like the, my F1 already, ex, F1 OPT already expires in July 20, 2024. Yeah. But I, I don't have any paid employment right now under the F1 OPT. So basically, it's going to expire in July 2024. And since I don't have the STEM OPT extension with me. Yeah, so it doesn't seem like you have much to lose to use your EAD. I'm not, but I'm not telling you that it's okay. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you that it's a violation of your status to do it, use it. But in the practical real world, it's probably not going to matter because your spouse is going to become a U.S. citizen and all that's going to be forgiven and you're going to be fine. Okay. Yep. Thank you so much, Jim, for taking my questions. You're welcome. You're welcome. Good luck with everything. See you, Cat. All right. All right. Hey, um, I thought Jay Cruz was a dude too. Sorry. Sorry, Jay Cruz. Uh, hey, I got a new picture of me and the Norinator. How about that? That's from two years ago. This was a great day. We went, um, we went, that's a, uh, the end of a field and we would hit softball. She had softballs and they'd hit the, go up the hill and ride back down. So we had a, a lot of fun that day. So I got that frame. Uh, it just fell over if you heard that loud crash. So that's what that was. Um, Hina has a great idea, which I really like. And that was that we have a day where all the OGs come in and say hello. I think we could actually, we can actually have, I think we can have 10 people on screen at the same time. So we would have to figure out, we probably have to do that separately from the show and just record it and play it or something. I don't know. I don't know if we could pull it off, but um, we could do, or we could do, I could say the show is starting at four and we could have everyone come at three forty-five, something like that. That would be fun. It'd be fun to see everybody to see all the OGs at once. That would be fun. Maybe we'll do it on my birthday in September. That would be fun. Or maybe when we hit episode 600, we had some good guests for 500, but Hooli's going to remember. All right. All right. Amrit is here. Hello, Amrit. Uh, hey, Jim. Uh, before I, you know, ask my question, I'd like to give some quick background about uh, my case. So, you know, I came to the U.S. Uh, a few years ago on F1 visa to start my bachelor's degree. And uh, I graduated in 2021. And last year I got my H1B visa uh, picked and approved. Awesome. And, all of that. Uh, and so right now, uh, later this year, I have plans to go back to school and pursue a master's degree. And I know that I'll have to, you know, transition from my current visa status, which is F1, which is H1B, to an F1 visa status. So I know that there are, you know, a couple of ways to, you know, go about that. One is to do a change of status when you're in, while I'm in the U.S., and the other one would be to go back to my home country and get, you know, a, a new F1 visa, you know, stamped through well, the. Who, who told you you can do it in the U.S.? Uh, I was advised by a couple of other lawyers that a change of status, like a. Uh, petition that I would have to submit to USCIS. Wait, you're changing from H1B back to F1? To F1, yes. Why? To go back to school to do my master's degree. It's a full-time master's degree. How long were you on your H1B? Uh, so I got my H1B visa last year in October, so about six, six days, eight months. Why are you going back? I don't, I don't understand why you would give that up. Just well, I'll be well. I'll be able to start my H one B back again right after I finish my master's yes. degree, right? So that's why I thought I can just get the studies out right now and then start my H one B right after I finish my master's degree. Okay, so so you never went out to the United States and got the H one B stamp? I did. I did. I got you it did. last month. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
All right. I got it stamped last month. And so Dude, would you let recommend me say, let me just say let me just say right out of the box, you're gonna you're confusing the shit out of them with all this, right? Like okay. in, their, in their mind, they would have liked you have just to stayed in an F one. I got a little confused, but they're like their system's not built for someone. I've never heard of someone doing what you just said. So that means they probably hear that pretty rarely. So you went ahead. So as of right now, your last entry, your I-94, you got a stamp H1B, and now you want to change in the United States. You want to change your status back to an F1. And you're yes. wondering, you're wondering, um, should I do that inside the United States or should I do that outside the United States? Right. Yes. That was that was the first question. Yes. You have an I-20 in a school that wants to take you and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have an acceptance. Yeah. From, from the university. Yep. So, yeah. They'll give me an I-20. So. And when did you want to start school? Uh, this year in September. So the problem is change of status can take three months, but it can also take 15 months. So I, the problem is I don't know if you're going to know if they if they agree with it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, and yeah, I've asked them um, about this. I'm waiting to hear back. I can also like, will I also be able to work on my H1B status and still go to school? I'll be able to do that, right? If this change of status process doesn't get, uh, the petition doesn't get approved by uh, the classes start date. I guess that would be up to the school if they would let okay. you do that. Okay, but would you recommend to go back to my home country or do the change of status? Or like, would you even recommend to do the change of status in the first place? Well, it sounds like that's what you have planned to do, right? Yeah, I mean, if it if if it's a really really you know difficult like visa process, and I don't want to get into all of that. Uh, and I'm assuming this is this, what country is this? Uh, India. So, yeah, I'm so you know, that's a total crapshoot. How did right. it go? How did it go getting your H one B stamp? Was it hard? Oh, it was pretty seamless. Uh, very easy uh, to get it. I got it. I got my. I went back to my home country this year in uh, January and got the stamp H one B stamp, and that was pretty easy. If you went back before September, when would you go? Uh, whenever I'm recommended to go. Uh, the, what I have been advised is that, you know, since F1 is a non-immigrant visa and I have, you know, come into the U.S. initially on an F1 visa and then got an H1B, then that would not be uh, a good way to go because that would, like, go against the uh, intent to immigrate. Like, it would show very clear intent to immigrate. Well, H1B is dual intent. It doesn't, yeah. Um, I think, I think I don't like anything about this plan either way. Like you're asking me to choose between two bad options. Okay. And the problem with doing it here in the United States is like I said, it could take a year and you wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. So, but, but if I compare that to with you actually being in the United States and being able to do what you want to do versus, um, going to the embassy and not being able to come back to the United States, I think I'm going to pick doing it here. Doing it here. Okay. Uh, I did go on the USCIS website and see, and it said that, you know, depending on the location of where the case is sent, it like, it's like you said, between three to six months, but. Uh, yeah, but, but every week someone comes on here and talks about how their change of status took more than a year. Uh, and and I would say, especially when you, when you're going to confuse them by what you just did, I'm not saying you did anything wrong, but I'm saying they're going to be scratching their head. This guy was on an F1, then he won the H-1B lottery, and now he wants to go back to F-1, they're going to, that's going to throw him for a total loop. Okay. Um, so now that you know, uh, you know, a little bit more about this case, like, you know, what would you recommend? Uh, I would recommend staying, I would recommend staying on my H-1B and making some money. Right. Uh, okay. And maybe doing, maybe you could do a part-time course of study at night i would i would make money and go at night if you can if you think you can pull that off but neither of those options you gave me are good ones i don't like doing the change um i don't i think the change would be approved mm -hmm. it's not so much that it's just that how long is it going to take and are you going to be able to start your semester when you want to that's what right. that sort of stuff versus getting stuck outside the united states where they're like dude right. you've, been, you've been in the united states long enough we're not we don't feel like giving you the we're just gonna put your admin processing Got it, got it. Uh, there's also one more thing uh, to add. So my parents, they live back in my home country in India, yeah. but their green card application has been filed and it's been pending for, you know, the last like 10 years. And so do you think that would affect me going back to F1 or, you know, anything regarding Who that? filed for them? Like a sibling? Yeah, sibling, yes. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that was true when you got your F1, wasn't it? Right. Yeah, it was true. Oh, when I got my probably not. Okay. So I we're mean, in 
sometimes when they get the sense that the whole family is wanting to pick up stakes and move to America, that hold, they hold it against it. But it seems like you were already there. Right. Uh, got it. Okay. Because the priority date is in the next like one or two years. And so when I got my initial F1, it was what, seven years ago. So I, I don't True. know if that like, being close yeah. to the priority date makes a difference. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So my overall vote is stay here. That's my overall vote. Okay. So don't do the like change of status. I wouldn't do any of it, but I, I certainly wouldn't do the embassy piece. Got it. All okay. right. Okay. Thank you. All right. See you, buddy. Thanks. All right. All right. L Lawrence is here. Hello, Lawrence. Hey, Jim. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Calling you from Cape Girardeau. Nice. I remember you. Yeah. You're the, you're the reverend, right? I am. And I'm calling you about that because uh, I remember last time I told you I had my I360 approved. Yeah. But again, with the backlog and everything, uh, the priority that is not here yet. And uh, as a priest, you know, I still belong to my diocese back in the Congo. So there is need for me to be there. So I have to move back with the expectation to come back and work again here for this. There is like a, an agreement between the two churches. Got it. So for now, the most likely scenario would be to uh, apply for um, my immigration thing to be sent to the NVC. Yeah. So that I can do visa processing. So I had a question about that. Uh, the first one was, um, when my 360 was approached, there was somebody who, who was the representative. Of course, the name of the institution is the diocese. Yeah. But then there was somebody, a priest, who signed as, you know, the, how do you call it? Just do me a favor real quick, Lauren. Don't put the, I don't want people to see your form. Just go oh, ahead. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So go the ahead. person who was, you know, in care of, there was the yeah, name. The agent. There. Yeah, the agent. Yeah, the, the signee. So for, for this new form, which is I-824, Right. Should I have the same person sign it or even a different person, but it's still the diocese and institution? Doesn't matter. I mean, if you can get the same person, that's probably good, but it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Because, you know, I work on campus at CIMO and yeah. it's a it's it's campus ministry that's where I get paid and I want my director here to sign instead of the person in the diocese who is four hours from here. Because it's St. Louis Archdiocese? No, it's Cape Dorado. Oh, Cape. Um... I, I wouldn't mess around with it too much. If you have the opportunity to have the same person do it, I would. Okay. And then the following question would be, for example, when everything is sent to NBC and comes the time to upload documents, would would I be required to have an affidavit from the from my, my employer or it's not required? Well affidavit of support. You mean the, the affidavit of support, the I-64? Yes. No. No, that's just for family stuff. You don't need an affidavit of support for that. Oh, okay. Well, that that those were the two questions I want to ask because I'm about to to do that. So that when are you going? When are you going back home? I'm going home in the summer. I will save travels. Thank you. And I, my priority date is not until you know the back in 2020. So I don't know when they will get to 2023. I'm has it sure. been moving? I, I haven't checked. I don't think it's moved here. Recently it has, but it was stuck in 2019 for a year before it moved for a little bit, a few months. So it has moved by just one year. Okay. Thank you, Lauren. Good luck, sir. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Let's go over to Cesar. What do you say, Cesar? Hey, Jim. Thanks. Thanks so much for taking the call. Um, I was hoping you can help me understand uh, an update that came through um, just today, actually. Um, I got an email from from the National Visa Center, and they so they're saying that my petition was returned to USCIS, um, and it's no longer at the NVC. But I, I thought that I had that I was no longer doing the National Visa Center because I was able to do um, advanced parole and apply for adjustment of status. So I, I did adjustment of status. Is our time out? We got to start. We got to start at the beginning. You started it sort of towards the end. We got to start at the beginning. So sure. So where are you from? Mexico. When did you come to the United States? When you were little? Yeah. And so then um, you got DACA. Right. And you got advanced parole? Yes. And then you married a U.S. citizen? Yes. And 
before you left the United States, you filed an I-130 petition? I did. And so um, did you file the I-130 as a standalone, like not with a 45? Correct. And then when you came back on the advance parole, you filed the um, you filed the 45? Not right away. So um, I but it's we on, did on file now. Yeah. So we did the I one one thirty, and then we were waiting for uh, for the six hundred one a, um, and that. So while while that was pending, I was able to do it instead the advanced parole, and then do the adjustment of status. Okay. So as we sit here today, has the I one thirty been approved? Yes. And the forty five is pending. It is. Okay, so USCIS is confused because you pointed the ship in one direction, right? You pointed the ship to um, USCIS I-601A consular processing once the 601A is approved. The 601A, I assume, is still pending? Actually, the 601A was, uh, they they actually denied it. They sent me, a, they just sent me a, a letter uh, Why so, um, so apparently they sent me a, a request for evidence, but they sent it to the wrong address. Mm. And so I, I never received it. Uh, but but you don't really care. You don't really care that much anymore because you're going this whole different route. Exactly. So I actually got the R. They, they got it back. Then they sent it back to me. But it was I only had a few days, so I never responded to it. But regardless, I was already doing the adjustment of status. So, so it's probably it's probably good that the NBC has returned the petition to the USCIS. That's what you want to happen so that they can adjust you. So, OK, so what happened is that I went to my USCIS account. Yeah. And the latest update that I had a few actually just a few days ago was regarding my medical exam. So they already feed me. I send it to them, uh, and that was about seven months ago. Yeah. So I logged in this morning, and now it says, um, it's, so the whole thing about the medical exam is gone, and now it says case is being actively reviewed by USCIS. Yeah. So I, I just don't really know what what is going on with them. Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Um, I, I thought that the whole NVC thing with the the 601A thing and the Ciudad Juarez was gone and it wouldn't ever come back again. Well, but you've left some things hanging on the vine and that confuses them, right? So I could see a scenario where in their mind, this guy, like the 45 isn't all the way attached to the I-130. And they're like, why did this guy ask for a waiver? How do we know that? Like, how do we know he got advanced parole? Like, you've thrown a lot at them. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's confused them. When What's the receipt date on the 485? So uh, almost 14 months ago, uh, last year, January. Yeah, so I, I don't know for sure, Cesar, but I think eventually you're going to have to sue them because they're not going to be able to make all the sense of all this. I think you're just going to get stuck in limbo for a while. I mean, you're pretty close. Seven months since they asked for medical, that's that's starting to tell me that they're confused and they don't know what to do, so they're just not going to do anything. You know, I love that saying, the confused mind takes no action, you know. So I think in a way they're sort of overwhelmed by all the stuff that you've given them, and then the 601A got a, a re RFE'd and then you didn't respond. So I think that they, there's just all this stuff that's sort of slowing the case down and they don't really know what to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I, at what point should I, should I be thinking about, uh, you know, potentially suing them? Where do you live? So the closest city would be Portland, Oregon. Yeah. So I would say, you know, anytime, I mean, seven months is a long time. The case has been pending for 14 months. So whenever you're ready, I think, I mean, you can wait as long as you want. I don't want you to spend money. You don't have to, but um, I think it's the only way you're going to get them to pay attention. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I also noticed actually, Jim, that, that the, uh, the estimated waiting time, it actually jumped from, it, it used to say five months and now it says two months. 
Oh yeah, well, we don't believe anything they say about that. When yeah. did you file the I one thirty? That because that's real to me. We can really play with that. Like, when did you file the I one thirty? The I one thirty was filed in two thousand nineteen. Yeah, dude, I'd sue them. Yep. Yep. Okay. They're okay. not going to mess around with that. Okay, Jim. Uh, so I could email you. Yeah, just email me and say, "Hey, it's me, Cesar. I'll remember what happened." Okay, sir. Thank you very much for your help. I appreciate it. You got it. Have a good day. Oh. Old Donna's having fun in the comments as she often does. She's making me laugh. She gave Joan a big up, your damn self, Yardy. What does Yardy mean? We got to know what Yardy means. What the heck? We got to get the lingo down. That's that's so much fun. I love talking to um, Donna. I hope one day she comes on the show. I think we can invite her. Even though she's new, we can invite her to the OG meeting. Zach is here. What do you say, Zach? Hey, Jim. How are you? I'm great. Good to see you. Yeah, for so sure. So I just get to US like five few weeks before. Nice. Congrats. So as you say, like my fragile case, I just want to start with you. The 19 days rule, I just want you to explain for me shortly, which is I know it, but I just meet somebody the other day, like in the dinner, and he says it's a lawyer, but he says something which has confused me. Okay. Mm. Do, do, do you want me to say the things where I just like, I have a conversation with him or do you want me to listen to you? Just tell me what you want me to help you with. I don't understand what you want. I me just to. need like the 19 days rules. I just get uh, here at uh, US with a visit visa, which yeah. I didn't decide to stay here, but finally I decided to stay here in the US to seek an asylum. I don't have like marriage status or anything, just to seek okay. asylum and to continue my case. Why do you fear going back home? The situation where I'm living there is very critical. I have some serious kids there for real okay and should i just also i have a question also another one. It's like should i have to prepare my documents from there i didn't plan to stay here i just came for 15 days finally i just decide i wouldn't just expect to be like this but i have well, to decide immediately have you left your country and gone back to it at all you, can is, this some time, is this the first time you've come to america yes the first time the first okay. time and you just arrived 19 days ago five weeks yeah so you're gonna like, have it means to, like uh, uh one month in one week and you got you got a six month entry on a b1 b2 exactly okay cool so um so if you fear persecution and and if you can show past persecution that's the best way to show future persecution then you might be able to make a claim for asylum it has to be based on one of five protected categories which are your your race your religion, your national origin, your political Definitely. opinion, your political opinion, or your membership in a particular social group. So it can't be everything's bad for everybody back in my home country. It's like they're going to get me because I'm Christian, or they're going to get me because I have brown skin, or they're going to get me because I'm six foot tall and the government hates everyone over the feet of six foot tall, you know, or my political opinion, or whatever it is. So you're going to have to prove that up. It's obvious on the it's a news already. It's everywhere about the okay. situation where I am right now in the country, my home country. Okay. It's obvious, okay. uh, but okay. I didn't prepare prepare my documents. The main question is that: Should I wait like nineteen days, or can I start my case right now? Oh, you just want to do it within the first six months. It's, uh, you want to file it within the first six months, so we can. Start, you, are you wanting our help? Yeah, definitely. I just want to start it with uh, right now within this uh, within we, this week. Yeah, just email me. Email me info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com and, and we'll follow right up with you. So it doesn't exist on me. The 19 days rule doesn't exist on me. I can't I don't have to wait like 19 days to our appeal to start my case. I mean, sorry. No, no. I don't have to. All right. There is a there, there is a thing I would just want to ask you also. I'm staying like around uh, Washington between Maryland. That there's a cases, there will be much little bit like acceptance. They get acceptance, you know. Some states that are different, like Texas, uh, Florida, Florida, um, Los Angeles. That bad to start a case, but I'm yeah. thinking there are some states which is good. California. What are you suggesting me? California is the best. I like Chicago, but I don't. I don't spend much time thinking about that, Zach, because. Sometimes you could get the meanest officer in the best office 
or you could get the nicest officer in the mean office. So statistically, yeah, it probably makes sense to go to California. But um, other than that, I don't have many thoughts. And I would say just live your life and, and make your asylum claim. All right. Is there anything you want to tell me? No, I, I, the stuff I want to tell you, I'd rather tell you after you email me. I'd rather not tell you on camera. On camera. All right. Thank you, Jim. I, I, I got I, everything I, perfect. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good See day, Jim. Yeah, you yeah. too. All right, Mariana's here. What do you say, Mariana? Hi, Jim. How are you? It looks like you're. It looks like you're getting your driver's license photo taken with that blue background. I know. I they just painted the wall. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, and you? I'm well, thank you. What can I help you with? Okay, so I have a couple of uh, questions for you. Um, we applied for my husband's and my son green card. Um, uh, 2023 they got their um permanent residence card on april 2023 great and now i want to know when are we able to apply to for them to become a u.s citizen i know that it's different i know that my child is under five years old so i want to know if are we able to do it right now do we need to uh, wait three years until my husband applies uh what are the forms that we need to file so you're your husband and son got their green cards through you. Yes. You're a U.S. citizen. Yes. And um, how old is your son? He's going to be five this April. So he's like your stepson, right? No, no, no. He's my uh, he's my son. I Good couldn't bride. apply for his um, U.S. citizenship uh, when he was born because we were living outside the U.S. And mm -hmm. I was living outside the U.S. Um, for the last 10 years. So that's why I had to apply for a resident, the permanent resident card for him. Okay. So your son, um, your son can become a citizen right away. Like that part, that part's pretty straightforward. You don't have to wait for him. I don't think I, I'd want to make sure before you actually filed anything, mm -hmm. but generally if he's admitted as an LPR and he's in the custody of his U S citizen parent, yes. that's you. Then he, and then I'm pretty sure he's a citizen by operation of law. We'd have to check, but that's the general dealio with him. Okay. With your husband, um, how long how long have you been married? Uh, for the past seven years. Seven years. Okay. Yes. So he so he got a ten year green card. Yes. So if you look at the start date on his green card, mm -hmm. and you add two years and nine months and and another couple of days because you don't apply too early, he can apply. He can apply as long as you guys are still married two years and nine months from the start date on his green card, he can apply on the three year rule. So that's when he would do it. OK, perfect. Uh, that's uh, that's what I, I had in my mind, that he doesn't need to uh, wait five years. Right. But I was confused because um, I read somewhere that um, my son was able to apply for citizenship right away. Yeah. Um, I was confused about form N400 and N600. Oh, he'd, be, he'd be N600. Yeah, yeah. And um, I also read that as soon as my husband, if, if I don't want to apply for my kid right now, I can wait until my husband applies for his um, U.S. citizenship and my, then my son will acquire the well the, right away. We'd have to we'd want to be careful with that because okay. I could see it because I think and I don't know because I don't have my law books in front of me, but I think your son is a U.S. citizen. Right now, oh like at this moment right now, I think he's a U.S. citizen, I think, by operation of law. What I mean by that is you haven't gotten him a U.S. passport. You haven't filed the N-600. No one has decided that he's a U.S. citizen. Exactly. Let's, let's fast forward 15 years and you, you're you like a bad mom and you didn't take care of anything immigration wise. And <laughs> let's, say, let's say this little five year old turned into a little criminal menace and they tried to deport him. Not that any of that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But but I think as of right now, he's a U.S. citizen, so they could never deport him, I think. So if you never got the N-600, if you never got the passport, I think he's already a U.S. citizen. So if he's already a U.S. citizen and then you tried to get him his citizenship through his dad, they might take your money and then say no because he's already a U.S. citizen. So oh, we, would, okay. we would need to check all this out. If you email me, I'll I'll clarify it for you and, and then you'll know what to do. But okay. Pretty, okay. I'll do that. I'm pretty sure I'm right and that all you need to do is the N-600. And even, the thing is, even if he becomes a citizen through his dad, you're still going to have to file that N-600. So you might as well do it now, not then. Yes. Yes. Um, it's on my best interest is to do it yeah. right away as soon as yeah. I can. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a yeah. good one. Bye. Okay, bye.
Oh, we're having fun today, aren't we? Truxel's here. What do you say, Truxel? You're on mute, Truxel. Hey, Jim, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm good. Sorry, I just have uh, two questions. Um, yeah, I want to find out. Um, do you need to explain why you overstayed when you're applying for the adjustment of status? On the question I said, have you ever violated your immigrant status? No, you would just, no, you would just say, I overstayed my visa. That's it. At the back of the page? Yeah, you don't explain why. You just say, I overstayed my B1, B2, or whatever it was. You don't have to explain why. They might ask you at your interview if you have one, but you don't have to put it in the forms, and you shouldn't. Oh, okay. Uh, is this the same thing with uh, if you, like, uh, overwork without authorization? Yeah, same thing. So you just, do you write it at the back or you don't? You just uh, tick yes. Yeah, for that one, I would just check the box yes. Mm-hmm. All right, Jim. That's the only thing I had. Thank you so much. Awesome. Good luck, Trucks. I'll see you, buddy. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Akshay's here. What do you say, Akshay? I can't hear you. No, do you have headsets on? I think it's the headsets. Hmm. I can't hear you, bud. Sorry about that. We'll try to come back if we have time. Let's go to JC. JC? Hi, Jim. How's it going? Great, man. How you doing? Oh, not too bad. I have a question. I'll try to be quick. Um, I'm waiting. It's going to complete uh, two years of my I-601 that was filed. Uh, of course, it was filed in the U.S. I'm in Brazil due to extreme hardship to my three U.S. adult children. Yeah. Uh, originally, who filed the I-130, the I-130 was approved. It was my middle uh, child, adult, all three are adults. And so uh, because uh, one of my three adult, adult children who, you know, had the, the thing written by the uh, psychologist and everything on, on extreme hardship, um, I want to send the money that I'm going to pay you to do the the writ of famous. Yeah. Uh, from here because the dollar is starting to go downhill in relation to our currency here. So I need to convert to dollar and send to the United States right away. As okay. soon as possible. And then I want to send it to my daughter. She's one of my kids. The, my, I have three children, all three of them adults and did the, had the paper, uh, the evaluation by the psychologist. Yeah. But worried about me sending the money to her in that, that could be some, how did she say? Oh, what, like, like some conflict of interest and stuff. Because who's gonna file the rate of mandamus? Would it be the same child who filed the I one thirty? It probably be. It probably be all four of us. It probably be you and the three kids. Oh, I never thought about that. Oh, I see. All four of us. So if I send the money to my daughter, just so she keeps the money there until. I don't have the 5400 yet saved up. Yeah. So when I have this amount, I, I will be sending her little by little. There's no uh, legal issue for her whatsoever to keep that money on a separate account, right? Say that again? If I send the money to her for her to just keep it in dollars in the United States saved in a separate account of hers at a bank, there's yeah, no yeah. problems for her, right? No. Whatsoever? No. Okay. Yeah, my money is, is <laughs> it's legal money. I, t I teach English as a second language here in Brazil. So, I mean. Yeah, um, I don't think you need to worry about that. Okay, so all four of us will file together the writ of mandamus. Probably. Okay, and that is 5400 right, Jim? Yeah, it's 5000 plus 405 If you pay up front, you save $500. So it would be 4500 plus 405 Oh, I, I will pay up front. So how much again? 4500 Plus 405 So 4905 Oh, okay. I'm glad you told me that. I was like, okay, 40, uh, 4905 Yep. Sounds good. And so the reason I'm, I want to do it by June or so is because my son's child will be born in September. So yeah. when 
pursue them, they usually answer within two or three months, you said? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, JC. See you, buddy. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. All right. All right. Let's go back to Akshay, see if he got his audio working. Hey, can you hear there me? There we now? go. Yeah, I got you. Go ahead. Hey, uh, so I've applied for my I-130. It's already approved in January 2023. Who they asked me. You're, you're the petitioner or you're the beneficiary? Petition. Okay. For your spouse, your parents? Yes, uh, my spouse. Spouse. Okay. Is it an overseas case? Yes. And where's your spouse? India. Got it. Okay, go ahead. So they asked me to do an I-824 because they said my embassy was missing. They couldn't identify if it was going to be inside U.S. or outside U.S. Oh, that sucks. So I've already done my I-824. It's been, I applied it in February 2023. So it's Jeez. already been past the whole year. God. Where do you live? Uh, currently in Missouri, but when I applied for the file, I was in North Carolina. Have you updated your address? Yes. Are you in St. Louis or the western St. part? St. Louis. Um, actually, send me an email. <clears throat> I think I can help you without doing a full blown lawsuit. Um, so I could save you some money. I think I can help with this. Okay. I know a guy because I sue him so much. I think I can help fix this without actually suing them. Because what happened was I also have one friend in St. Louis that I'm working with. Yeah. They applied for an A24 also, but they applied like in May or June. And they already got their approval like in February. Yeah. So I was trying to understand like if I've applied before them, is this a lottery system or what was going on? No, it's just BS. It's, it's not a lottery, it's just BS. Send me an email. I'll take care of you. Okay. All right. Thanks, Akshay. Thank you. See you, buddy. Uh, in answer to all the questions, Pineapple Lemon is right. It's just one lawsuit. So it's 49.05 total. It's just one beneficiary. So just one. All right, everybody. Have a good night. We'll be back tomorrow. What time? What time, uh, Hooli, tomorrow? 2 p.m. Central. All right, 2 p.m. Central. We will uh, we'll see you then. Have a good night. It's fun seeing everybody. And nice to see Nurse Laura live and in person. Glad to have Pineapple Lemon back. Looking forward to Donna coming on the show one day. And the OG party. We're going to have an OG dance party. All right.